Good to see y'all. Bless your heart. You got the best that out. Ask the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Well, y'all tell me y'all do great things. You too. Thank you. You are good preachers. Good teachers. All right. So, um, Ephesians 4:11 through 16. When somebody says, "So what's the purpose of the ministry?" Um, the the important thing here that I really like is verse 14. And I mean, I think you like gotta know verse 14 because. Ministry exists so that the children of God, verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking truth and love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head of Christ. So the whole point of ministry is to help us mature. Right? Paul says to the Galatian church, I should be I should be speaking, I should be giving you meat, but I'm have to give you milk, because y'all still babes. Grow up. Right? It's, it's kids that go back and forth. Ask them today what they want to be when they grow up. Ask them tomorrow. Different answer. Right? Like, that's what children do. Ministers help move the body to growth, to maturity, to solidness, so that we're not like, oh, well, today I believe this, tomorrow I believe that. Right. I was talking to, um, I was talking to a young lady yesterday, and she was telling me about her mom. She's like, her mom is a different religion every six months. And you know people like that. Nah, bruh. We're supposed to be solid in our belief system. And that enables you then to live it out. Um, I was thinking about Job and my leader's heart. Y'all check it out on Sunday when the, the newsletter comes out. And one of the things I said in there is that Job's response is a default response. That's what he does automatically, good or bad. Whatever situations, he worships God. So on the very worst possible day, when Job is faced with all kinds of hell, headache, and turmoil, his default response is he worshiped God. We're surprised. We're like, that don't make no sense. That's a whole nother level. But his life has conditioned him. Every day he worships God no matter what. We as ministers have to move the body to where they worship God no matter what. That's the point. Five-fold ministry. Okay, here we go preach. Here we go. Verse uh, number 12. Name three main elements of any point in the sermon. Explanation, yeah. application, 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 illustration. illustration. That's right. Explanation, application, illustration. Easy money. Y'all should have been like, ah, oh, I know I got one right. So can we go back yes. to number 11? Number 11. So to sum up what you said, it's to move the body forward. To, to mature. Body, to mature the body. Yes. We exist to help mature the body. So we're teachers. We're trainers. We're tutors. We're, you know, exhorters, encouragers. Anything and everything that we need to be in order to help move the body. We're counselors, we're leaders, we're whatever. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. To help them work out their issues, right, to get to where they trust God. And then, of course, that means that we got to work out our issues, too. It's growth on all parts. We're not perfect, right? It's a walking process. But yes. Okay. Okay. What is homiletics? Why is it important? Mm -hmm. Nobody know what homiletics is. All these signs of uh, preaching. Right, exactly. It's preaching, right? It's how we preach um, and how we preach. Okay, why is it important? It's the primary way we deliver the word of God, right? Yes. Like people come to church on Sunday to get the word. That's that is the number one primary way a Christian will receive the word of God. It's not the only way, right? What other ways do they get the word of God? Watching your life. Say what? Watching your life. Watching your yeah. life. Yes, okay, good. So witnessing, right? Through our lifestyle and through our words. What else? Testimonies. Testimonies, okay. Bible study, wow. right? <coughs> Bible college, Sunday school. There's all kinds of ways, but what does your average Christian, what's the number one way your average Christian gets to work? Music. You said music. Is the number one way your average Christian gets to work? No. No. What about preaching? Right? Yes, but that's, the, that's my whole point, though. Like, why is homiletics so important? It's because it's the number one way. Your average Christian will not probably come to church on Bible study, is not coming there early for Sunday school, is maybe not listening to it on the radio, but what are they going to get? They're going to be there on Sunday. Right? Mm -hmm. We're going to drag our kids where? On Sunday. They might not be there on Wednesday because we're busy, but we'll be there on Sunday. So, if you got them for 90 minutes, captivated audience for 90 minutes, 
you better deliver that message. If you got it for 30 minutes, captivate the audience for 30 minutes, you better deliver that message. That's why it's important. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. What are the three languages that are original to the Bible? What are the three original languages in the Bible? Greek, Latin, and Aramaic. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. What kind of Greek? Wait, Aramaic? Not, what's the difference? Is that different from Arabic? Yes, okay. it is. Yep. Aramaic. Yep. So, bonus question. Bonus question number one. What are the New Testament languages? Or what is the New Testament language? Wait, I'm still waiting. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what are three languages in the Bible, right? Yeah. Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. New Testament. Okay. Which one is New Aramaic. Testament? Hebrew. It's Hebrew. Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic. Okay. okay. And which one is New Testament? Which one is the New Testament and which one is the Old Testament? I'm gonna go Greek, New I'm Testament. Go. Okay. We got one for Greek, New Testament. Oh, it's a Hebrew, 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 New Testament. Okay. okay. Anybody else got any? I mean, it's three options. Hebrew is Old Testament. Okay, Hebrew for Old Testament. Okay, so we are stuck. Hebrew and Aramaic are in the Old Testament. Okay. Greek is in the New Testament. Anybody know what kind of Greek? Bonus oh. question number two. Uh -oh. Hold on. What kind of Greek? <laughs> Good. I'm writing it down. Like New Testament is Aramaic. Koine. K O I N E. Koine. Who? Koine. K O I N E. Greek. Koine. It's, Koine. The, it's the Greek of the common. So Greek was, you had um, basically, you had like a formal version, and then you had the common language. And so the New Testament is written in the common Greek. My, my, my. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a little mark over that somewhere. No. All right. Here we go. Name three Bible resources you can use for exegesis. For who? Oh, I don't know. Not my commentary, I don't know dictionary, concordance. All right. Commentary, dictionary, and what? Concordance. Concordance. Okay, good. Anything else? The Bible. The Bible itself. Oh, yep. The Bible. Yeah. Anything else? Oh. <laughs> that was obvious that I didn't even think. All right. Well, I mean, it's Bible resources, um, but yes, the whole point is just, you know, do you know what resources you have available when you need to do your study? Okay. What's the difference between exegesis and eisegesis? Eisegesis is what you don't do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. That's, that's good. That's a good start. All right. I think most of y'all got that right. Right. Eisegesis is when I bring my interpretation and then I find text to support my interpretation. Exegesis is when I allow the text to speak to me and the Holy Spirit to guide me. And the Fellowship of Jesus Christ preferred method is exegesis. All right, four types of learning styles. Imaginative, analytic, common sense, and dynamic. All right, did you know that? Of course. No. I put kinetic, audio, and visual. Okay. Well, I put visual, verbal, oh. All right, so those are actually the types of learners, right? Kinetic, audio, and visual. I went to the next question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> types of learners. All right, and the other types of learning styles. Now remember why this is important. So everybody this month got a chance to teach Sunday school and Bible I study. Bible study. And I apologize because I did not get the last two people. So this feedback may not be 100%, but how many of us took into consideration all the different learning styles and the ways, the types of learners we had? Okay. And I, I know Dr. Cook had an extra presentation, all right? She brought an audio video um, to it. One of the things you want to make sure you take into consideration again is, do I have something that allows my learners to learn the way I'm, I'm teaching? So if you're an audio learner and you like hearing things, obviously you're going to be good. But if you're a visual learner and you want to see it, have I given you something to see? And if you're a kinetic learner and you need to touch it, do I have at least a handout, a piece of paper? If you notice, we always have what? A handout, some paperwork for you to touch, right? We always have something for you to look at. Um, we are, and then, of course, we do talking. So you want to make sure you have those kind of things. Put something in somebody's hands. I know Sister Shayla, when she did it, she put handouts in our hands, right? Um, when she did her teaching. I had a handout. You had a handout as well? Yeah. Okay, good. So there. So we have some of that. So that's good. All right, so know your learning styles. Know your learners. As you get more and more experience, it'll be easier for you to just keep that going. Um, okay. Can you the, them again for the Sister Yolanda? The four learning styles, yes. imaginative, 
analytic. Oh, A N A L Y T I C. Common okay. sense. Okay. And dynamic. All right, number 19, to find salvation. Saving of one's soul. Okay, saving of one's soul. Repenting of sin and turning away from it. Okay, repenting of sin and turning away from it. Right? Do you think that would be important to be able to help somebody? Yes. So this is, what does it mean to be saved? That's how that question comes, not what is salvation? They say, what does it mean to be saved? Right. Okay, so we need to be able to know that. What are the five parts to the Calvinistic view of sanctification? And the acronym. What's the acronym? Look at Tulip. Okay, there you go. That's all I had. <laughs> I knew Tulip, right? And that's always a good start. All right, so total depravity. Unconditional election. Unconditional election. Limited atonement. Limited atonement. I had limited view. <laughs> Same thing, right? <laughs> um, irresistible grace. Irresistible grace. And perseverance, perseverance of the saints. Perseverance of the saints. All right, what's our meninistic view of sanctification? God, why is he doing this? <laughs> that one's partial depravity. <laughs> conditional election, mm -hmm. conditional salvation, unlimited atonement, and resistible grace. Okay. What's okay. your view of sanctification? That's not on me. It's not. But the whole point of you getting introduced to the Calvinistic and the mm -hmm. Arminianistic is so that you can figure out what your view is. Okay? That's the whole point of this whole thing. Right? So that we can find where you walk in this. So you can be able to articulate and have conversation. We don't talk Calvin and Arminianism. Right? Because we're non-denominational. Right. But if you went to a mainline Methodist church, or you went to a mainline Protestant church, you went to some of these churches that are right now having these huge conversations about homosexuality and these denominational conventions and stuff like that, that's a huge question. Like, are you Calvinistic or are you Arminianist? Right? Because that tells you whether you think that somebody can be saved once they've always saved or you lose your salvation. Right? Whether this is the work. And remember, we're talking about sanctification. So sanctification is the idea of what? What's, what's sanctification? Is that, is that a question? Setting no. Apart. Okay. No, not quite, not quite setting apart. Sanctification is the progressive work, right, of me. So salvation is instant. It happens. The minute I accept Jesus Christ, I'm saved. Sanctification is now the work of of me being transformed from the sinner saved by grace into the image of Christ. Can you start over? No. But it's on video, so you can go back and check it. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't, though, I would start over. You gotta keep going. We got, we got, we got 20 minutes and 30 questions. Fivefold gifts of the ministry. What are they? Verse 22. Number 22. Prophecy, speaking in tongues, laying on the hands. Um, nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Apostle, prophet, evangelist. Oh, good Lord. I know them too. I'll put the wrong right. ones in there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Good plan. Five folks, gifts of the ministry. Five folks, gifts. Five folks, gifts. Five folks, gifts. Five folks, gifts. What did you say? What did you say? I said apostle, pastor, evangelist, prophet, teacher. That's what you said, Dr. Cliff? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just check. Good plan. All right. Check so, five folks, gifts. What does John 3 16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that was never to leave him. Okay. Everybody knew that, right? No, I had to look. Yes. <laughs> what was the first miracle performed by Jesus and where? Turn, Turn water, water into wine at a wedding. At a wedding in Cana. Cana? Oh, Cana. Yep. Cana. Ah, Cana. Why not you All right, how many animals went into the ark? Oh, and that should have been types. That should have said, that, that wasn't a good question. That, was, that wasn't a good one. Now, how many types of animals went to the ark? So they become bunch, seven pairs of clean. Okay, so seven pairs of clean animals, two of the unclean. Huh? Yep. Oh, okay. The animals who were the animals who were clean and went in by sevens. The animals who were unclean and went in by twos. Those of you who don't know, that's the uh, Bible trivia mm -hmm. questions. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna say one. We all get told two by two, yeah. two by two, mm -hmm. two by two. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, say it again. Seven. Seven clean. of the clean. Yep. Seven clean. Seven pairs of clean. Seven pairs. Okay. Pairs. And two, and two unclean. Mm -hmm. All right. Who was the oldest person? How old? 
Methuselah. I said Methuselah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yep. Did I put that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then how old? 969. No, I just remembered it was him. I couldn't remember how old he was. I put 989 in first. Yeah, 969. There are two people in the Bible who did not die. Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah. Did not. I had that the first time. All right. That was one of my stars. All right, Enoch and Elijah. Just you know, a little, just a little Bible trivia. Shake your brain up. You was working real hard on Calvin and our video. You need some easy answers. Okay, the five said. No, it just got hard again. Doing the uh, opposite of what we are called and commanded to do by God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what else? Anything against the divine laws of God. Okay, anything against the divine laws of God. Okay, what else? Right, so sin is just disobedience to God. Ultimately, right? God says, God says you can eat every tree except the tree of life. Right? No, not tree of life. Oh. Uh, tree of knowledge. Knowledge. Tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge. knowledge. But you didn't tell them it was the tree of knowledge. You said you can eat any tree in the garden except one. And then what did they do? They ate the tree. Mm -hmm. Right? So sin is disobedience. Disobedience to God. <coughs> Define heaven. Finish. Right? No, say it right. I said finish. Though. Finish, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. What else? Where we will live eternally with the Father. After Where we will live eternally with the Father after the rapture. Okay. What else? Anything else? I said no more sorrow, no more sickness. Okay, no, no more, more sorrow, no more sickness. Friday. All right. Anybody? Anything else? Oh right, yeah, heaven's heaven's the finish line. Heaven's goal. Heaven's home, right? Heaven's heaven's back to where the way it's supposed to be. Uh, okay, define hell. Don't want to go. Ain't going. All right, ain't going. Go. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. <coughs> okay. All right. Ain't going. What else? Anybody? Those who do not accept salvation and follow through the process of sanctification will go. Described as a fiery furnace or lake of fire. I don't know where those responses came from. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Hell is where you all accept me when you refuse to obey God's laws, separation from God. Right? And, you know, I, I thought about hell for a while because there's so many different things that people say. Like, <coughs> is hell a real place? You know, it's not a real place. People cease to exist. Is what a lot of people think, right, that they're going to just cease to exist when they die. You got to be able to articulate well all three of those, sin, heaven, and hell. In your own words, what's the difference between salvation and sanctification? Anybody want to share some of your answers? Sanctification is the process that follows the act of salvation where you repent of your sins and turn away from them. Okay, that's good. I like it. What else? God was working on me. What did you put this in the chat? Salvation is getting saved. Sanctification is after you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I like it. Right. That process. Just remembering salvation is an act, a single act. Sanctification is progressive and ongoing until the day of Christ's return. Those are the key things, right? Ongoing to the day of Christ's return. Wait, which one is the act? Salvation. Salvation. Yep. Salvation, single one-time thing. What we believe in the fellowship, sanctification, progressive act. So you can slip up on your sanctification journey. That doesn't necessarily cost you your salvation. Did I just throw you with that? Yeah. So, like, salvation, because it's progressive, it's something you work on every day. You might have days when you're not as successful. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I intended on getting, I intended on fasting, I intended on not cursing, but see, that person cut off my car and bumped me, ooh, or are they ooh, about ooh, to get ooh. the business? I ain't been saved that long. I knew I was saved, but <laughs> I did cuss. Right, exactly. That's sanctification. That's some work. But where you are now is not where you were 10 years Thank ago you. when you first got saved. So, yes, Lord, that's I sanctification. Okay, difference between the talent and the spiritual gift. Throw it out there. What you got? Okay, a talent is like God gave me a talent to sing. Okay. A spiritual gift would be like speaking in tongues. Okay. Is that right? Okay. So a talent's natural, usually, right? Usually something that's a natural ability. Whereas a spiritual gift is can be your talent taken to the next level, mm -hmm. but could be completely unrelated to your talent. So like you might be gifted to sing. 
You might have the talent of singing, and the Spirit can come upon you and utilize that singing as a gift. So oh, now okay. when you sing, you are a gift to the people who hear your okay, singing. You oh, that's uh, awesome. But you also might be talented as a singer, but been given the gift of prophecy. So now you're singing, and you stop in the middle of your song, and you should begin to prophesy. Oh, okay. And then you go back to singing. Because your singing has ushered in the presence of God because God has taken your talent and turned it into a gift. And then he gives you the gift of prophecy in the midst of that to, to speak. And then you go, Does that make sense? Yes. So talent is not necessarily a gift, but a gift can use a talent. What passage covers through the Spirit? Sister Shayla? Oh, oh, I just did it. Oh, stop it. I just did it. That's what I called you. Oh, God. Um, hold up, hold up. What passage? What passage? Read scripture. I can't even look at my stuff. No, you don't get to look at I can't even think of it. Stop it. It is. I can't I can't think. Wait, don't do that. Don't do that. You can't do that because I'm stuck. Yes, you is. Oh, come on. Somebody inside, give it a book. Galatians. Galatians. Five. 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 Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Who does that? Go past the scope through the spirit, Galatians chapter five. Chapter twenty-three. Oh, sorry, Galatians chapter five, verses twenty-three. Let's, Let's pray the book of the Bible. <laughs> Look again, I same same kind of question, verse or question thirty four, favorite book of the Bible, same kind of question, you know, as the favorite scripture. If you wanna know it. Please like don't just say some like book and then don't know anything about your book. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> no. If you don't have a favorite book, like let's go. Get get, get the Bible read and come up with a favorite book. <laughs> Alright. Um, in your own words. This, okay, yeah. What, what's your favorite scripture passage from your favorite book of the Bible? Okay, so that it goes ahead. 36. In your own words, describe one body, many members. And 37 goes with it. Where do the above term come from? One body, many members. This is a classic. This, this is a classic Christian uh, Bible, uh, especially leader passage. Okay, we say it all the time. One body, many members. One body, many members. Okay, and the idea comes from Corinthians, right? Where Paul is talking, and he says that, like, the hand can't say to the eye, I don't like you, so I don't need you. And if we all hurt, you know, like one part hurts, then the yeah. all body hurts. Yeah. Right? It's the whole idea of spiritual gifts and the argument that we shouldn't be arguing over our role in the church because everybody's role in church is important. Yeah, I have one body, all is one, many members, the head, neck, shoulders, all that. Everybody's equally important. Whole body. <laughs> so you need to know that. You need to know that. You will see that one again on Oros. There's a lot of questions about that. So I'm just going to give you that heads up. A lot of questions about that. Yeah, like they all weren't sure. It's a common question. And what did you say was Corinthians? What? First Corinthians? You no. said Corinthians. I'll believe it to you to figure Ooh. out the rest. Oh, Name okay. two Bible <laughs> errors about the Trinity. Name two biblical errors about the Trinity. <laughs> Number 38. Modalism. I didn't know this one. Modalism. Arium and adoption. Okay, good, good. Oh, boy. Yep. Because there was a ton of them, right? There was several. I think there was like four or five from that, from that class we did on that. So you need to go back and know your stuff about the Trinity. Yeah, we did a whole class on the Trinity. I was glad I got to use our notes for that. Oh yeah. All right, three teachings about the about the Trinity. Three New Testament t scriptures on the Trinity. Three Old Testament scriptures on the Trinity. That whole little piece right there. Verse was that 38 through 42, 41. If you struggle with that, you need to go back and review your stuff on the Trinity. People don't believe in the Trinity. You've got to be able to articulate how and why of why we believe it here at the fellowship, why it's important, and then help people understand that it won't make perfect sense, right? Because there's no perfect model of it in the world. Like we can, you have the four leaf, the, the three leaf clover, right? You have all the different ways that people try to describe it. That's not quite complete. So you gotta be able to describe to somebody enough to get them an understanding, but at the same time explain to them, you're not gonna be able to understand it because it's nothing like anything. All right, three areas in your spiritual walk you've seen improvement since you started this class. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Identify one area in your spiritual walk. Skipping that. Same areas. All right, seven areas related to sermon delivery. You're graded on in your rubric. 
Everybody remember that? I have a rubric here. Seven areas that you're graded on uh, from your rubric was on page number three of your rubric, which was passion, clarity, eye contact, hand gestures, movement, uh, voice, and appearance. See, I never got that. I wasn't here. You never got the sermon rubric? No, I never got that. Remember, yeah. I was in Texas. It's I was in, in Texas. Your, it's in your email. It's in, my it's, it's in your email. No, remember I told you they switched my phone and I lost everything. I but lost everything. Your, your, email is not on your, your email is not on your phone. No, my no, I had it in my um, I had it saved to my. Right. What's that thing? The word. I lost all my words. I lost all my things. I wrote okay. too. Okay. You gonna show me how to pull it back? So these? Oh, I never got that. You sent me the thing, even with the. What's that thing you was just talking about? Homiletics? Home Homiletics. Yeah, I, I never had a paper, but you sent it to me on the phone. Yeah. And I was reading it up there, but when I went and had my phone there, they did a hard reset. I lost everything that I had saved. Right. I had saved it over there. And I should be able to get that. It's all still in your email. All you have to do is go back to that email and download that email to whatever the phone. Mm. Oh, y'all just too smart. <laughs> Don't worry, we gonna grow your technology game. Y'all gotta help the system for real. For y'all. Okay. So those are the seven yeah. areas related to oh. sermon delivery. Who wrote the book of Genesis? Moses. Moses. Very good. Who was the first recorded woman judge? The boy. The boy. Who's the first recorded woman to have a church in their home? Lydia. 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 Lydia starts the church. I didn't know that. She's the purple the seller. Paul meets her down with women in washing clothes. Priscilla was actually like the first woman. On the ministry team. She's the first one in the ministry. What was Peter's vision on the rooftop meant to prepare him to do? Well, first you had to know what Peter's vision on the rooftop was, right? Definitely. All right, so. Huh? Was that the sheep? Yep, Peter has the vision of the sheep. And what on the sheep? Unclean animals. And what does the what is he told to do with those unclean animals? Except them. Eat them. He's told to eat them. His vision was what? He's up on the he's up on the rooftop. He's praying. He's been fasting. He's hungry. The sheet comes down from heaven. There's unclean animals. Peter's a Jew. The voice from heaven says, "Eat these unclean animals." He says, "No, I've never eaten anything unclean." And then the voice says, "What I say clean is not unclean." And then he understands that to mean that something's shifting. He wakes up, goes downstairs, and there's some Gentiles who are saying, hey, can you come to the house of Cornelius and preach to him? And that's the first time the gospel gets taken to the Gentiles. Oh, wow. And then Peter will later relay that message to Jerusalem via the vision of the sheep so that they know that the gospel is meant to be spread all around. And where is this? Yeah, Acts. I give you the book. Thank you. What does John 1, 1 say? In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word, the word was God. Why is that important? The word is what we preach. The word was the word, was the word was the word. It's all existing, it's coexisting. Okay. He was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with him. Okay. So it's the Trinity scripture, all right, is one reason why it's important. Okay. All right? It, it brings us back to Genesis chapter 1. Right? Mm -hmm. But also, it clearly articulates the union. John's whole book is about proving that Jesus is the Son of God, but is also God. Who's also man. Who's also fully divine. Okay. Alright, seven churches sent letters from the books of Revelation to John. One of the seven churches. Anybody have, wait, wait, before you say them, did anybody have more than three of them that they like knew offhand? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, go ahead. Where are the seven churches? Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Ephesus. Okay. Smyrna. Mm -hmm. Pergamos. Mm -hmm. Thyatira. Thyatira. Saros. And Laodicea. Laodicea. Yep. Okay, so we've got. Uh, all right, anybody know where to find it? In Revelation. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2 through Revelation chapter 3. Church of Ephesus, Church of Smyrna, Church of Pergamon, 
Pergamon, Church of Thyatira, Church of Sardis, Church of Philadelphia, and Church of Laodicea. If you've not read these, let me just encourage you to read them. It's super interesting. I think still very relevant. Preachers preach on them a lot of times. Pretty common. So just good, good for you to know. You will probably see that question again on Oros. All right. Maybe a question like, uh, what church is the fellowship of Jesus Christ most like from the book of Revelation? And the answer is? Yeah. When you read it, you'll be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see something, see something like that. That's how like, we'll be recording, so I'll have that for sure to go back and look at. All right, finally, Heaven Hell Essay. Y'all, y'all wrote such lovely essays. All of you. So, yeah. Are you still missing your page? Did you, are you missing the page? Did you get your page back? I did. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, defend the statement, heaven and hell are real places, using at least three scriptures from your lesson on the topic and no more than two paragraphs total. Write no more than two paragraphs total covering whether or not heaven or hell are real prices using at least three scriptures from your lesson on the topic. I just basically wrote the same question back. Note, a paragraph is five sentences and a sentence is no more than 20 words. I have to write that because, you know, some of you all just like to go and go in. But in this case, y'all did. <laughs> okay, again, whole point simply being at the end of the day, you got to defend heaven and hell. Saints, people don't believe in it. They just don't. They think they just die. And if I don't think that there's a heaven and I don't think there's a hell, then I'm going to think earth is both or either or, and my life is going to be lived out accordingly. Okay. Five-minute break. Good job. Good job on y'all stuff. Bring y'all papers back uh, while you go take y'all break, and then we're going to get into today's lesson. I'm so excited, and I can't deny it. That makes fun of me. Y'all are so awesome. <laughs> Yes, you are. Yes, you are. How do you get stuck on something you just did? <laughs> My brain said not. That's called the brain fart, man. Three days. I hate that. Yeah, I got, you got to believe me. I used to do that in school. You call me, I'll be like, I'd be stuck. I told you I was the one in the back all the time trying not to get stuck. Oh, no. I'm sleepy. You probably like me, they still call me anyway. He said, if I go back, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, look, that's what, man, I'm going to say, he said, he said, that was back in March. Okay, email, email. You got to go to search. I am, that's what I'm typing in his name. Look, you don't want to know how many emails she got saved up. <laughs> Who I got saved? Mm -hmm. That just shows you God's word is on time all the time. Yeah. And you probably need to look at yours. I sent it to you. Who, me? Yeah, I think I sent it. I sent it to yeah. You sent me something? Yeah, June 27. I sent everybody a, a devotion. Oh, okay. And that's what we was talking about that, that around that time. Oh, so I need, okay. There it is. Yeah. That's it. What's well, to say your email is there until you delete it. If your phone oh, crashes I tried to, man. or whatever, then all of that. That's what he kept telling me. Shaylee says so Shaylee still got it. I'm like, right. where, man? Where? Where? He right. said, you still got it. 
I was like, no, it's all gone. <laughs> I kept saying, no, it's all gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Here goes my paper. I can get it in just a second. Perry Vows, it's that time again where you get to rate your peers. You told her about it? I did. She said she was going to come get it the next day. And now I'm going to eat it. You <laughs> said now you're going to eat it? Hello. Right. Huh? Hello. Yeah. June 2020. <laughs> you said what till June 2020? Yeah, something. It, it's June 26th of June, like 5 p.m. I know it's all I Oh, oh my gosh. Did it really? Yeah. Do that again? So the June the August twenty sixth, is it still going to be the twenty sixth? I'm pretty sure it is. Let me to see. do the sermon and record ourselves for the research project. Okay. August twenty sixth is Monday. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Both are still due that Monday. <laughs> Am I gonna be here for that Labor Day weekend? No. Nope. Yep.
I mean, you'll be here. I won't. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is personal. <laughs> Get away. This <laughs> <laughs> actually Thanks personal. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> well, go ahead and call the movers. Gotcha. The <laughs> movers. So that's August. Both of them do August 26th, yeah, right? Yeah, both of them do August 26th. All right, let's get into it. Today, we are talking team building. Anybody know why that would be important as leaders? Huh? Yes, it is. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to double check, though. Make sure. Hold on. Hold on. All right, team building. 